What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description below and along the timeline. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. Yesterday we had another new member over on Patreon, although they're also a member on YouTube too. Superboy C. thank you so so much for the support you mad person. <laughs> and thank you everyone for being here, for taking the time out of your day to sit there and listen to me. Really does mean the world to me. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love guys. Now, our first story comes from Chick-fil-A EpiPen. Now, I know I always pronounce this wrong, so I'm going to apologize straight away. Is it Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Here we go. Am I the arsehole for refusing to replace my nephew's EpiPen after he unnecessarily used it because of something I said slash my food? Okay, weird title I know. Basically, my nephew has a pretty severe peanut allergy to the point where they carry an EpiPen around all the time just in case. From what I know, if he mistakenly eats a peanut or something, they have to use the EpiPen ASAP. My brother drops my nephew off at my parents' house pretty randomly. Most of the time he'll call ahead but sometimes he comes without warning but my parents are usually there and responsible. Of course, when we knew my nephew was coming, we put away all the peanut products. Today, I door dashed some Chick-fil-A for lunch, not knowing my brother and my nephew were going to stop by. I left the Chick-fil-A on a dining table while I finished a class. And when I walked out, I saw my nephew eating one of my nuggets. I panicked because I knew that Chick-fil-A uses peanut oil to fry their chicken. So I ran and told my brother that my nephew ate a chicken nugget that was fried with peanut oil and he immediately used the EpiPen on my nephew. When my brother's wife found out, she was furious because apparently peanut oil is refined and therefore my nephew isn't allergic to it, so they had just wasted an EpiPen. My brother is blaming me and says I need to pay to replace the EpiPen since it's my fault it was used. But I feel like, as his dad, he should have been aware of what his son was or wasn't allergic to and stopped him from eating something if he wasn't sure how he was allergic to it. However, that was their last EpiPen. My brother says that they can't afford to buy another one. I'm 16 so I do have a job, but it's minimum wage. And I only have about $800 saved. And it's a part of what I'm saving up for college. I can't afford to spend $600 on an EpiPen. Holy shit, they cost $600 in the US. That is insane. My fr a friend I used to work with, he's, he's quit now, um, but he used to have, carry an EpiPen everywhere. And I think he said they were like um, about 60 pounds. So I don't know, around 80, $85, something like that. But $600 for a pen, wow. But I think you you had every right to raise raise the concerns then because you know, all you know is that he's allergic to peanuts. So you made them aware and they should have been the ones to step back and say, look, it's refined and if the dad didn't know that that's his own problem like you say so yeah not the asshole in this story but let's have a look at the comments below to see what we can find sound like but actually says not the asshole you were concerned for his safety and alerted his parents to the possible issue it's always better to be safe than sorry sure in hindsight it was a waste of an epipen but better to waste it than not use it when it was actually needed the real asshole here is the pharmaceutical industry for making life-saving medication so fucking expensive Arsehole expert says, not the arsehole, none of what happened was your fault. Nephew took the nugget without asking. You told dad about the peanut oil, he administered the shot. Mum apparently knew peanut oil was okay, so why didn't dad? That's on him, his kid, his responsibility. To ask a 16 year old who was only an unfortunate bystander to pay that bill is beyond ridiculous. Miley30 says, if the kid's own father didn't know peanut oil was okay, how the heck were you, a 16 year old relative with no peanut allergy, supposed to know? It's bad enough that these people are trying to force you into a role of parenting their kid, removing all peanut products from your own house, really, and not supervising what their kid eats, but thinking you should know more of the allergen details than the kid's father is just entitled. Sorry, no other way to describe that level of awfulness. Not the arsehole, can't believe it needs to be said, but it's a job of the parents to parent. Now, I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is from Agbella May. Am I the arsehole for basically getting a substitute teacher blacklisted when I know she needs to pay? I have a foster child in class. At orientation, no matter what he did, he held this letter. His foster mum, FM, explained, of course I won't post it, and he can't actually read the letter. 
He's five, but he knows who it's from, and it's reassuring for him to hold it. She asked if he could keep it during the day. She understood if I said no, but I told her it wouldn't be a problem. I tried to coax him to put his letter in his cubby when he went to the bathroom or playground, but if he was opposed, I wouldn't push. The first few days, he was anxious, took it everywhere. After a few days, he put the letter in his cubby during recess and bathroom. Eventually, he was to the point where I'd leave it in his cubby all day. Then I had a sub. I expected he might hold the letter for reassurance again, having a different adult with him. I called her to tell her he's allowed to. Also left a note for her. Remember to allow X to keep his letter with him. He has a specific need and his parents and I have made this decision. The day I went back, he's emotional, won't join in. I text FM to ask if he'd left his letter at home as it was probably why he was so stressed. FM told me he came in without it the day before. He told her he didn't have it anymore. FM assumed it was an accidental loss. I found the letter on my desk. When I gave it back, he lit up and said, she didn't throw it away. He said the sub told him yesterday at Circle that he had to put it in his cubby or it'd go in the garbage can. I called the sub at lunch, asked, hey, did you have any problems with, with distractions in Circle yesterday? She said everything was fine. I told her I'd found his letter and told her he was glad to have it because he thought she'd thrown it in the garbage. I thought he may have misunderstood her. She said he needs to be a part of a class, same as everyone else. He can't be carrying things around all day. I mean, if he had some reason he needed it. And then I, admittedly rudely, cut her off and said, I did tell you. She said, you didn't tell me what the reason was. So how was I supposed to know it was a valid reason? I said, you don't need to decide if it's valid. It's something his parents and teacher agreed on. I didn't really let her respond. I said I needed to class. It was lunch. He was relieved it wasn't gone, but he thought it had been thrown out. He was terrified of losing it and clings onto it more than before. It's disappointing because when we let him go at his own pace, he'd been doing so well putting away to join activities. Now he's regressed. I ended up venting in the lounge and the seven teachers got upset, said they don't feel comfortable with her as a sub because she may override what she thinks isn't valid. We call in subs ourselves, so it matters if teachers don't pick you. And then I remembered I'd heard that she applied to be a sub because her family needed cash, so I feel a bad person too. Edit, I'd never not do anything about it. Her pay is nothing compared to his emotional well-being, but I could have handled it in a way that wouldn't have basically blacklisted her. I could have talked to the principal and he would have given her some training or something that would have let her keep working but improve. Edit, wow, thank you for your awards. I can't believe I got awards. It's so nice. My kiddos are enough to reward me every single day, but it's really nice to feel their love from you guys too. <laughs> now, I gotta say, not the arsehole in this situation, just because you're looking after that child's well-being. You, you discussed it with a parent beforehand, and like you said, it was agreed to that he can keep this letter on in his hands as long as he needs to for his own reassurance purposes. For the sub to override your decision makes them the arsehole in this situation, in my opinion. And as you said, the kid was doing really well up until that point. So yes, you're not the arsehole in the situation. And let's go to the comments below to see what we can find. Liars Little Pretty says, not the arsehole, she totally overstepped. Portable Alexis says, not the arsehole, you told her specifically that he could have it and you and the parents decided that. It is never up to her to go against what the main teacher and parents decide is best. She shouldn't be a sub at all if that's the way she's going to act because of exactly what happened. It has psychological impact for the child. Ab828 says, not the arsehole, this is abhorrent behavior. She doesn't get to decide if it's a valid reason. The power trip here is phenomenal and she shouldn't be around such small children if she's not going to listen to the teacher's instructions. To answer your edit, I don't think how you reacted was an arsehole, even if it wasn't the best and most logical way to handle it. I get feeling bad, but you are human and teachers often do vent to other teachers. Telling the principal might have gotten her blacklisted anyways. She has to learn her place as a sub teacher. Now, I turn it to you guys. What do you think the teacher should have done in this situation? Gone to the principal, told her teacher friends, or just told her to her face to butt out? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. And our next post is from Just One Dad. Am I the arsehole for making a post that hurt my bio dad? Long story, but I try to be as short as possible. When I was 19, my folks divorced after my mum admitted she'd been cheating on my dad on and off for over two decades because she decided she wanted to be with the other guy. And that wasn't even the worst part. She confessed to us that the man who raised me and loved me since birth was not actually my biological father. Instead, the piece of shit she was cheating on my dad with. 
We were both destroyed by this. I was seriously so scared I was about to lose my dad forever and that he wasn't going to want anything to do with me again. I mean, why would he, right? My dad, being the saint that he is, called me some weeks after. He took some time to himself and said I'll always be a son and he still loves me. Can't tell you how happy and relieved I was. After they divorced, my dad was in a dark place for a long time. Eventually we moved past all the pain my mum caused. The guy Chris had tried to contact me since the divorce for a chance to connect with me. We only spoke once when he called and told me who he was and that he's so sorry for the pain this divorce has caused me. He said he's wanted to be in my life for years but the situation was very complicated. I told him to fuck off and never call me again. He sent me a long sentimental text right after saying he understands that I need space and I'm his blood so he'll wait as long as it takes until I'm ready to have a relationship. That never happened. Since then they've tried to reach out often through social media or my family, especially Chris. I don't know why he thought he'd become an instant dad when the truth came out. It's been five years and still have a great relationship with my dad. He's in a better place now and has gotten himself his first girlfriend since the divorce. Wednesday was my dad's birthday and we had dinner at his house. We took a pic together in front of his cake which I posted on Facebook. It was a long post telling him what a great dad he is and I'm so blessed to have him in my life. Talked about him raising me and always being there etc. I'm not friends with my mum but another relative shared my post and she saw it. She commented on it and said this really hurt Chris's feelings and I purposely made a post knowing it would be shared and they'd see it. She went on a long rant about how he's tried for years to be a good dad and I'm letting my resentment prevent us from having a good father-son relationship. I blocked her right away. My grandparents said they also agree that it seems like I made the post with the intention to spite my real dad because there was a good chance they were going to see it. While I hate Chris, I didn't make this post with him in mind. This was to celebrate my dad's birthday, but the fact that I made it about him being my father, who was always there for me, seems like I was purposely trying to be a dick and hurt Chris. Was I the arsehole because my post was hurtful to him? You know, that post had nothing to do with Chris. In, in my opinion, and the way this story comes across, Chris is just nobody. He's nothing to you. He's not, he's not your dad. He may be blood, but he's not your dad. Your dad is the man that's raised you all your life and still takes care of you right now. And the fact that your mother and this dude played games for over two decades and hurt you and your father that way is ridiculous. In my, kind of, in my opinion, they deserve what they get from this beat, to be quite honest. To cheat for two decades, two decades to play someone. That is ridiculous. Wow. Let's go to the comments below to see what they say down there. Christina0001 says, not the arsehole, and maybe you should block this shit stirring relative who shared the post with your mum. Ryan's French Press says, not the arsehole, your relationship with your dad has nothing to do with Chris. You still wouldn't be the arsehole if you made t-shirts that say, fuck Chris, and wore it to Thanksgiving, because honestly, Fuck Chris. <laughs> Sorted Red Onion says, not the arsehole. I would respond with, I don't give a shit about Chris's feelings and go no contact with those people. Hemenucha says, not the arsehole. It's not about Chris and you've made that abundantly clear. Chris may have donated some chromosomes, but your dad is your father in every other sense of the word. Have you considered initiating an adult adoption? If you don't have a legal spouse, there may possibly be a situation in which Chris could wind up making medical decisions for you. It's a slim chance, but if you were incapacitated and your mother wasn't available, Chris would be considered your father in that case. I'm a nurse and I've seen stranger things happen. I'm also a former stepmom and I adopted my son when he was 23. An OP replied below and I think they're going to look into it. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> Oh, anyway, what do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story comes from Friends Will Be Friends. Am I the arse of not wanting to clean my boyfriend's parents' home? I, 25 female, live with my boyfriend, 27 male, on one of his parents' house. They live in the countryside and aren't really into living in the city. So as my boyfriend was living alone, I decided to live with him since we don't have to pay rent and this house is pretty central, which means going out and public transportation are pretty easy to get. His parents are okay with me living here for free. We used to have a cleaning lady come once a week. She then had to have heart surgery and has no longer contacted his parents. As my boyfriend works a lot during the week and is allergic to dust, I end up dusting off the house and not much else. Sure, I'd love to live in a home where everything is 100% clean, which we did when the cleaning lady came but I also do work a lot. 
We just don't want that kind of trouble, I guess. We clean the house fully maybe once a month or once every two months. Of course, we do the important things like laundry, dishes, cooking, changing sheets, etc. A few days ago, his parents came over and had lunch with us because they were having a meeting nearby. They're both lawyers. They weren't particularly fond of the state the house was in. They're very conservative, neat people who hate messes. Windows weren't shining, clothes weren't properly folded, etc. They said something like, well, friends will be friends. If you want to live with our son, we assumed you'd, you know, pay more attention to homemaking, you know. I was a bit shocked that I'm expected to have that responsibility. So I said, well, sure, but I do work a lot and I don't have time to do it more than once a month. They chucked, but I could tell they weren't happy with what I said. I get I'm here for free. I get my boyfriend works a lot too. I get this isn't my home, but I didn't expect this. The reason they're not hiring a new cleaning lady is because due to COVID, they have less money, which means they're fine with saving that amount of money every month, possibly because they assumed I would take care of it. And the cleaning lady had been here for a decade, so they don't really want to trust someone new. So, am I the asshole? Edit, just to be clear, I'm not saying the house is dirty with seven day old dishes in the sink or the windows so dirty you can barely see through them. All I'm saying is the house isn't in a perfect state, like spotless and shining 24 seven. It is absolutely all right, it just isn't perfect. Edit two, I didn't ask for a cleaning lady. She already worked here and they didn't want to let her go just because I started living here. Hell, I don't think there's, there's never much excuse for not keeping your living space clean, you know. I'm, I'm someone that likes neat things and th to keep things clean and all that kind of stuff. So I have my own cleaning schedule. <laughs> Well, every day I do a different room, you know, it takes me, what, 20, 30 minutes to do one room. And if I do that every day, by the end of the week, the whole house is clean, right? And I also do a full-time job, 10-hour days, and also YouTube in the, in the, on the sides, you know, as, at the same time. So there is always time to keep your house clean, in my opinion. Even if they got the most busiest job in the world and they don't have time to clean, then pay a cleaning lady. You're living rent-free you can afford a cleaning lady. <laughs> Let's have a look at the comments below to see what we can find. Mandalu says, you're the arsehole. If you're not paying rent, you can pay for a cleaning service to help keep the home. Alternately, you can offer to pay rent so that the parents can afford a service. But if the people providing you a free place to stay aren't happy with how you're keeping the place, you need to fix it. You and your boyfriend need to figure it out. Foible Schmoible quotes a section and says, hold up. They were paying for the clean lady in a house you and your boyfriend are living in. Let me be clear, you and your boyfriend should be sharing the cleaning, but at the same time, you are getting a very cherry deal here. Both of you should be cleaning more. I don't like their attitude, but I like your sense of entitlement of having literally everything paid for and taken care for you, even less. And since they didn't push the point, I'm not gonna hold their expectation against them that much. You're the asshole. you and your boyfriend should start acting like somewhat responsible adults. Shanlon XP1 says, you're the arsehole, you're living somewhere for free and you're annoyed that you're expected to clean it. Yeesh. And Dead Quinn says, everyone sucks here. You for the poor attitude and ungratefulness. Your partner for not splitting the chores or sticking up for you when his parents alluded you to being a homemaker. His parents for alluding to you being the one to do all the cleaning. You're living in the house for free. I understand you're busy, but you can't find an hour or two every week to clean your house. You're living in rent free. Unbelievable. You and your partner need to sit down, figure out a time every week to do the cleaning and split the chores evenly. The next time his parents mention the cleaning, you can proudly state that the two of you have figured out a routine that works for both of you and can now keep the house clean. Now I'm gonna turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. Once again, guys, thank you for being here, taking the time out of your day to sit down and listen to these stories and be part of the channel, be part of this community. It really does mean the world to me. All the support on Discord, Twitter, everywhere. You're amazing. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.